celebrating and showcasing some of the most amazing people around the world who are working to make our world a better place. This is CU TV News. I'm Jim Masters. Today we celebrate Kimberly Berg. Kimberly is an award-winning artist and male feminist advocate. He is especially interested in making women aware of their history, in particular their pre-patriarchal Paleolithic Neolithic history. Kimberly says today women at last have the chance to reclaim their inherent birthright. He believes that artists can play an important role in helping women rediscover their ancient heritage. His art tries to restore that part of ancient goddess cultures that once honored women for their sacred life-giving, life-affirming powers. Powers associated with the moon and wild animals. Qualities associated with art, aesthetics, dance and music, singing, chanting, and ecstatic states of being. Kimberly says his mission and life's purpose is to inspire women to be aware of that history. Recently, we had the pleasure of visiting with Kimberly Berg at his warm, comfortable, and inviting home nestled in the Adirondacks of upstate New York. Lane Redman wrote this book called When the Drummers Were Women, and she goes, she traces the history of drumming that goes all the way back into Paleolithic times. And it was basically women who were doing the drumming. And we have pictures and, um, that show that it, how important this was for women, not just Paleolithic, but in Neolithic times as well. And when I first read this, I was astonished that we could know anything that happened in Paleolithic times, let alone something this personal. The interesting thing is, is what was really revered was the goddess, the mother goddess. Women were able to associate themselves with the goddess because it was female. And that connection makes a huge difference because if you were, can associate yourself with the goddess, that means that you have a special, um, a special connection or a special uh, interest. And actually, that works, like I said, in Paleolithic times, it was not understood how how a woman became pregnant. It wasn't until much later in Neolithic times, like um, 10,000 to about 3,000 BC, where animals were starting to become domesticated. They couldn't breed unless they had a male. And that was the first indication of the role that men played in uh, regeneration. A man, um, dealing with women in a very positive way um, somehow affects his manliness and, and as a result um, that person might not be taken very seriously or even undermining um, male status or power. Uh, I haven't had that problem and any artist that really is devoted to their art. They don't let anything bother them by how their art is received. At least that's how I've been. Um, I have no qualms about uh, presenting women in a very positive light. And that is exactly what this culture needs, is um, to see women as very powerful, intelligent, and beautiful people. I have a website called isisrising.net and in the, in the website um, I have pages like um, Global Updates which um, is a following uh, the progress and the many turns in feminism that are published in either in paper or, or uh, 
gleaned through television or radio broadcasts. My website is also followed by homeschoolers, so that's another way that my work has, has a, a very important educational aspect to it. Half the population is female, but they're not given any stake in how that society is run. And you can't have a society that ignores half the people in it. And it only leads to instability. So what I'm trying to do is help women come to the point that they're recognized as uh, intellect. You know, they have an intellect, they have a beauty, they have a spirituality that we can all gain from. And to ignore that is detrimental to the stability of the society that we have been living with. So the idea is that um, we don't need women is not, um, or is a functioning part of, of society is, is, is very detrimental to the survival of the society itself. It creates a lot of problems. The main purpose of the museum is to provide a platform for feminist art to be shown. Uh, feminist art is not part of the portfolio that one usually sees in a gallery. It's more or less an underground movement. And by creating a museum that features just this type of art um, is very important because this is what women are. And, and most of this art is orientated to women and their relationship to nature, their relationship to spirituality, and their relationship to animals. Um, time over and over again, the, the pictures that they create um, deal with these these particular themes. And in the art community at large, you know, we rarely see uh, these things that are of most importance and value to women. Just recently, um, I have been trying to gather as many images as I can that have been created by women and feminist women. And um, I have right now, I have like over 2,000 such images. This is an underground movement that receives very little attention in our world, but it's something that uh, is having a very important effect on women and their, spiritual, their spirituality. One thing about my work is I've never tried selling it. I've, I've never, um, I've always been collecting it in hopes, with the plan of someday creating a museum where it could all be seen at once, not um, just one painting here or one painting there. And that, that is my long-term goal. So, all the paintings that you see in this room are paintings that I've held back from putting on the market. Uh, I don't know whether they would sell or not, but the thing is that's not what is important for me. What an empowering story and unique individual. To learn more about Kimberly Berg, his exquisite art, and much more, visit this website. For CU TV News, I'm Jim Masters. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.